So guys, unfortunately, this is me going back to the drawing board on this car as far as steering. Uh, I did have a plan. It didn't work out. I'm going to explain it more in this video. about what I'm finding what I'm doing for the steering setup obviously this isn't like a, a normal backyard not very many people do this type of front steering setup so I wanted to publish what I found it's not gonna be very helpful because I was originally planning on possibly making a set or even publishing the measurements for a set so that somebody could possibly build them themselves or have them contracted to build as far as building apart I was going to have it machined out of one solid piece and then have a uh, serviceable or removable ball joint that I could press in and out but unfortunately the machine shop uh, waited like a month and a half to tell me that they didn't want to do the job so now I'm even further behind and I'm going to throw something together because in all honesty the Came, the stock K member on this car is a band-aid for right now because eventually this car will be a strut front-end car. But for now, let me explain to you guys. So this is a stock, it's not an A body, but it's a, a B body lower ball joint bracket or steering arm, if you will. This is a B body because I have B body big bolt pattern Mopar brakes on the front. So it's got disc brakes with the larger uh, five on four and a half in the front. So this is normally how this arm sits in there. If you're looking, you know, this is the front of the car, this is the back of the car, the steering legs would be in the back and it would go towards the center of the car from the rear. So the problem with that is your Ackerman is way off. There's also another underlying thing that you probably won't be able to tell on camera, but the center line of this ball joint is actually shifted towards the back bolt hole. I think it's like an eighth of an inch. It's not that much, but most people would say just flip these and run it on the opposite side so it's on passenger side, this is in the front. But that makes your caster off as well from the offset change, as well as the Ackerman being wrong. So, this plan is to address that, both those issues, honestly. So what I had originally planned is I had taken a stock lower ball joint holder, cut it apart, hacked the back off. This is the back, you can tell by the tab here. And just mocked up a location where I needed my steering to work and then sweep the steering to see if, what the uh, Ackerman numbers are, what the bump steer is etc etc doesn't have to be pretty it was just for measurements I dropped this off a of machine shop the machine shop said sure I'll get to it and that was a month and a half ago they hadn't touched it so we're on to plan B possibly plan C depending on how you look at it so I think that would work and I'll kind of quickly go over my plan of what I was going to do obviously have a billet made and I was going to use this section here and have it threaded for a Mopar screw-in ball joint. I can't remember what the part number is for these, but it's, it's very common if you look it up. Part number on this one right now is a 001-6200. And this is a low friction ball joint, but I got it because of the, the threads are taller here. Um, my plan was is to thread this up in and then have a uh, jam nut go down and hold it in place. This is actually an upper ball joint but has been used on lower ball joint applications. My fear was that it was a obviously optimally you would want a press in from the top because that is load bearing there. 
Uh, I couldn't find one in this correct taper, so this is what I was going to use. Unfortunately, I bought all these ball joints in there. They're not going to get used. They're probably going to sit on the shelf. So that was my thought. And obviously, I was going with what this is measurement as far as drop and everything. So this plan's getting ditched. Still, my plan is to use a stock ball joint slash steering arm. The problem with this is I'm going to modify this and this is a serviceable part so if it breaks then I move on and have to redo it all again and that's as far as you know the it's a race car it's probably not going to break a ball joint but optimally this isn't a cure it isn't a long term if you drive your car thing to do but it is what's going to happen unfortunately what I plan to do here is the same with that what I just showed you I'm going to hack the back off because I don't need it and I add some tabs cut now this is 5 8 uh, steel arm and it's going to go on to here which I'll have to fit it so by moving the mounting hole for your steering linkage outside of the ball joint fix it it doesn't completely fix but it uh, makes your Ackerman and your bump steer better uh, obviously your bump steer is controlled by the length and the angle of your steering as opposed to what your suspension is so I don't want to really get into that video but this is what I'm doing big heavy plate I'm gonna chop this off and a lot of people will weld this directly to their spindle. I'm not actually going to do that. Even though it would probably work better, in my opinion. But I've got another plate here. This has all got to get bent. But basically, it's going to go bolt through here and then it's going to get bent this is going to get bent down and then out a little bit but this is going to get welded flat here bolted welded along the seam and in all honesty it should be way overkill for what the car weighs but that's kind of my plan there is to have that like that Hopefully that makes sense. So, obviously this isn't optimal. It wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to drop this off, hand the guy a fistful of money and have it built. Didn't happen. As far as other things on the car, I'm really working on that. I've got the parts ordered. So, one thing I have to do make sure of when I order the new bracket or ball joint is that the bushings and stuff inside the tie rod are centered iron and not like a plastic or something that's going to melt when I weld it obviously because it'll ruin the ball joint. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and order those off Rock Auto and read the description and make sure that they're centered iron or centered bronze or something like that that will withstand heat and grease them really good. This car is honestly it's honestly ready to try to move and drive and stuff, but I haven't. Um, I haven't even attempted to do anything with the trans because the linkage is still messed up. I still haven't touched it. I do have another linkage that goes through the trans that I'm going to go ahead and try to mess with, but I have to drain all the fluid back out. And there's like almost three gallons of uh, ATF in it. So. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that after I figure out the steering. So if I get to the point where I have the steering together and I can manually, you know, push the pedal down, have somebody put it in reverse and see if it'll go in reverse and then see if it'll go in drive because I have the rear end in the air, I can go through that function without actually pulling the trans and taking it down or everything. But 
I still do have quite a bit of tin work in the back, but meanwhile, I'm also doing the swap on my dad's El Camino that we talked about last winter. Uh, we're finally getting around to that, which is what you guys are standing on as far as filming right now. You're standing on his engine. The engine sounds good. I still have some tweaking to do. I don't have very many parts left to get, but it's just a lot of work. I need the windshield grommet, and I've got to get the little clips for that, and then it should be drivable. But we are, I'm living in Michigan, so uh, we have, I think, six, eight inches of snow right now, so. Not gonna get to drive it this year. It's not a big deal. Uh, I just want to get it ready for the dyno. I don't anticipate that that will be this year. Unfortunately, I want to make sure everything's lined out. I can wire in everything for like two step, uh, boost control, uh, bump, trans brake. I want all that done before I try to go to the dyno because I don't, I'm actually taking it to a, a friend of a friend and I don't want to waste his time. Um, he's, he's a very professional guy and it's, it's, it's uh, one of my biggest fears is to look like an idiot by taking a car that's cobbled together. So really gonna put in some time on this car. We do have an announcement on another car. Uh, you could possibly see it in the background at this point, I don't really care. Um, waiting on parts for it, but that will be announced uh, fairly shortly. And I thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. And I'll see you on the next one. We'll try to do a, another video next week. Thanks.